Okay, great. So thanks, first of all, for having me. Um, my name is Nir Yosha, actually from New York. So um, I saved the flight to Atlanta, thanks to uh, coronavirus. And uh, I'm going to talk about open source solutions for SIEMs. Uh, I work for a company named Empower, which is a SIEM provider um, that allows a kind of a top-down approach for SIEMs. That's why you see the pyramid out here. Uh, and Empower is also contributing open source uh, pieces of their software to, um, to the community. But this is going to be a you know, real uh, fire hose talk. So feel free to contact me uh, for any questions later on. This is my Twitter handle and my LinkedIn uh, connection. So just a little bit about myself. I'm originally from Israel, uh, born and raised. I started my career in the Israel Intelligence Corp. And I moved here to the US uh, around 20 years ago. Actually, I live in New York, I have three kids, which I um, made sure I'm not going to jump into the talk now, so I locked the door. And um, I worked for multiple vendors in threat intelligence and in uh, identity management. Uh, and the photo here you see, by the way, is me in my first B-side, uh, dressed up as a detective. A little weird, but the idea was that the talk is around indicators of compromise and threat investigation. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. Uh, but enough about me. Uh, let's talk about our uh, agenda. So um, SIM is not a new thing. I'll, I'll discuss the current uh, historical challenges with SIMs, um, and then how I believe we can solve it with open source. There are a lot of open source tools here, so bear in mind that um, I'm not going to get to all the details. And we'll go through the tools via a, um, a term that I'd like to call SIMS funnel, which is basically tools that helping to reduce the number of uh, false uh, positives and noise until you really get into a manageable number of leads that can be investigated because as you will see later on, that's the number one issue it seems today. So uh, I don't think I need to introduce SIEM to any one of you, uh, but I just put down here a list of the most common use cases when operating SIEMs. Um, SIEMs becoming more and more involved with not only detection, but also prevention data. Threat hunting is something that uh, uh, there are still vendors out there that using specifically for threat hunting, but there's more and more threat hunters that using the scene for that. Um, and so that's, that's the, uh, the main purpose of, of building a scene. Uh, so let's talk about the three main issues with scenes. And um, the three ones that I uh, see in uh, all over is around the uh, fields normalization or terminology of, of fields coming in into the scene, uh, the noise that I, I mentioned earlier, and uh, the fact that it's really hard to understand what is a real true positive. And you can see here, uh, this is a lot of uh, cases where people either are getting false positives or uh, false negatives and, and missing real alerts. So number one issue is that there's no standard for SIMs as of yet. Each vendor is coming up with their own proprietary fields and schema for data. Um, a simple example is using IP addresses. Different vendors will call an IP address in different fields. And what that brings uh, when, when you look at into a SIM is a list of uh, name of fields that you cannot really cross correlate between because from a database perspective, uh, they don't seem to be the same identity or the same entity. And that's true not only for specific fields like IP addresses or URLs, but also for name for malwares and for adversaries. Vendors keep on using uh, their own terminologies um, and uh, does not necessarily sync between them. 
The second challenge around seams is all around the noise. And the fundamental issue is that log files are not necessarily sending events that are alerts. The events that going into the scene could be just operational events. Uh, some of the information uh, is coming in from detection tools that are not adjusted to your environment. And so there's a lot of false positives. We see this especially with IDSs um, and Windows logs. Um, and a lot of time, there's no fine tuning of those alerts coming in into the scene. And the last challenge that relates to the scene is that no single event really tells the story, right? Uh, you cannot really identify what is the threat or the attack progress from a single event. Uh, you need to look at more data coming in from more sources because every attack, uh, whether it goes directly with the cyber kill chain progress or other progress involves multiple uh, sensors within your environment and understanding the entire picture requires putting all those pieces of puzzle uh, into one story. So how SIM vendors solve the issue? Well, the issue of uh, terminology needs to be solved by normalization. So most vendors just take different type uh, of uh, entities and try to normalize them into some common schema. Um, in addition, there are rules. So the, the main challenge is uh, with noise is that there's a continuous need to update the rules, which takes a lot of resources, uh, either from the vendor as a professional services or from the um, uh, security operation uh, guys. And then finally, to understand the story, there should be some kind of an enrichment of the data. A lot of the time, the raw data really doesn't help understand the exact uh, source of the IP address, uh, what entity it involves, etc., And obviously machine learning. And by the way, all of those things are available today in open source tools. So if you don't have a SIM, uh, which a lot of small and medium companies are in that situation, and you need to build a SIM either for compliance purposes or because of the uh, uh, use cases I mentioned earlier, uh, there's a couple of things that you need to start doing first. So the first thing to do is just look at your current log types. Specifically, when you look at your environment, uh, SIM should have at least one type of network detection tool and one type of endpoint detection tool. Um, depending on your environment, you might want to add or also wireless type of logging or cloud if your uh, operation uh, or business operation also depends uh, in, uh, in the cloud activities, uh, which more and more providing uh, APIs and, and hooks for um, SIMs today. And one ad additional thing to look at is the gap analysis of, okay, where am I missing uh, data? where our logs are not available either due to a licenses from the vendor or just because I don't, I don't have those detection devices in my environment. So once we have this portion of logs that we can work with, uh, the second decision is which workflow we wanna go with. Uh, there's no right or wrong uh, way to go here. It's really depending on your team and the process you're using today for threat detection and mitigation. But generally you can divide it into two types, right? Uh, you can decide that you send all the information directly to the SIM and then do the filtering and the rules um, and the alerts from there. Or you can have some intermediate uh, uh, solution that does some of the filtering for you. And I'll speak later on about those tools. Uh, and, and if you would like to use them, they're going to reduce, first of all, the, the total storage that eventually the SIM will use, but also they uh, will improve the uh, experience of the security analyst when they interact with the SIM. 
And then the last thing to consider is data enrichment. So when I'm talking about data enrichment, if you're looking at uh, identities like users, uh, very often Active Directory can help with adding metadata to users such as their department, their uh, specific role, uh, the user privileges and so on. If we're looking at uh, assets like servers or host, uh, it would be great if you will add also uh, uh, some context around which department this asset is part of, uh, how critical it is to the system, which one are your crown jewels, uh, and which one are you know, just uh, one server sitting in QA that has no access to the internet. So this is how I look at when I'm thinking of building a SIM. Okay, uh, the look is through a funnel, and actually this one is taken out of a post from uh, Specter Ops uh, by Jared uh, Atkinson. You, you can see the link down here. And the idea is that when we build the SIM, we need to go through this filtering process. And the main idea is that we don't want to clock the funnel. We don't want to end up with alerts that cannot be handled uh, by the amount of resources that we have in our group. Uh, and so we're kind of going to go one by one in, uh, through those steps and uh, see which tools can help us uh, in each step. So of course, SIM has no meaning if there's no data there. So we're starting with collecting the data. Um, the one that I highlighted here in red are the one that I have experience with. Uh, Beats, if you haven't heard of Beats, this is actually part of the Elastic Stack, which I'll speak uh, to a little bit more, and uh, helps to collect a lot of various uh, types of data sources uh, from operating systems to network to, um, to um, security devices. Kafka is uh, critical, especially when you deal with high volume of data with the uh, uh, high throughput and low latency and it acts as a buffer. So if any of the pipelines is down, you don't lose data. And then Logstash um, is really uh, coming in to be uh, instrumental when you try to parse the logs and solve this um, normalization challenge that I, I mentioned earlier, right? The, the challenge of talking in different languages. So, um, uh, you can see here some other ones, but I'm going to focus on those three today. Now, if you're missing some of the detection tools on your um, either endpoints or networks, you don't have to run and look for a vendor to buy them. There are great open source solutions there, both for network intrusion detection and uh, host intrusion detections. I'm sure you're familiar with them. Um, the nice thing about them is that they have a great community behind them. Uh, Zeek has some already out of the box tools that supports up to layer seven of network analysis. And uh, Suricata and Snort also have very similar formats. So if you're used to one of them, you can move uh, between the two pretty easily. Uh, on the endpoint side, there are less um, Enterprises there that I see implementing open sources uh, just because it, uh, it's uh, much more risky and they rather work with a vendor that has uh, accountability uh, on, on a piece of so software they install on an endpoint. Uh, but uh, we do see more and more customers using Wazoo in the production line. So if you haven't heard of Wazoo, uh, this was a project forked out of OSEC, uh, which provide a great um, endpoint uh, detection. And uh, again, the, the idea here is that they integrate nicely uh, with the other tools that I mentioned earlier, post the beats and uh, later on the logstash, which actually going to be um, what I'm going to, to talk about as well. So my company, uh, Empow, uh, released an open source uh, version of logstash parsers. Uh, the idea behind it is to solve this problem that I mentioned earlier with not using the same terminology and at the same time to reduce some of the noises even before the events going in into the scene. So 
Logstash, uh, you can see some, some links here. If you're not familiar with, it's very flexible framework uh, that is not necessarily um, uh, getting you locked into any vendor. It's an open source. Uh, it has a great parsing capabilities. Uh, you can look it up. It's called the Grok filter. And it is uh, very much compatible with the Elastic Common Schema, which is the Elastic Search version of standard field names uh, in order to be able to later on cross-correlate events coming in from multiple sources. Uh, another thing you can do with Logstash is you can enrich some of the fields. So a uh, simple example would be if you have an IP address, you can, use, you can use Logstash to enrich the data for geolocation. So you add location uh, into the IP address. Uh, you can also enrich using reputation. So if you have URL, you can enrich it and find out even before it goes to the scene whether this URL is malicious or not. So this is how it works, uh, an example of Logstash. Uh, each Logstash consists of pipeline and you can communicate between pipelines. You can concatenate pipelines. Uh, each pipeline has three, three parts. One is the input plugin and Logstash supports multiple formats, whether it's a syslog or CEF, uh, files, uh, what have you. Uh, so once you ingest the data, you can uh, filter it. That's, this is where you do the enrichment and the, um, the parsing. And finally, you can either send it to a database uh, or you can send it to another Logstash if you want to uh, chain few logs together or, or create a pipeline to pipeline type of uh, architecture. Okay. So not sure how many of you have heard of Sigma, uh, but Sigma is a little bit different. That is not a open source code. It is an open source standard. And the idea behind Sigma um, is to allow you to get out of the box a list of rules that already will help you find threats. Uh, so um, Sigma uh, is basically helping you both to maintain those threats but also to avoid uh, vendor lock-in. So if you're moving into another vendor, the rules in Sigma will still stay and will be able to work on anything you have. So how it works? Uh, there is a Sigma rule creation process. There's a huge community that already contributed a lot of things that helps you identify um, very common techniques like lateral movement, uh, uh, privilege escalation, initial intrusions, and so on. You can create also your own rule if you have specific rule that is not part of the community. Then depending on the sim that you use, you can convert the rule, the rule to your sim. Uh, you would be able to add custom fields that are relevant only to your company. And then you would be able to hook it into a search query and start sending alerts um, to incident response and security operation teams. If for any reason you want to move to a, another scene, you simply need to use another converter, but you don't lose the original rules created uh, and maintained by Sigma. Okay, so just kind of a recap, we spoke about how we getting the logs shipped into Logstash how Logstash can help us with parsing, and how Sigma can help us with creating those rules, all open source. And now we're looking at the other side of the open source, which is the storage and search capabilities. And so uh, one of the solutions you can look at and the one uh, we have experience with is the Elasticsearch or the Elk stack. Uh, Elasticsearch is basically an open source for search and storage. It's not originally meant to be a sim, but it is highly used in the security community as a sim because of three main reasons. First, it's very scalable. Uh, you can really handle huge amount of data and throughput use it uh, using Elasticsearch cluster. Second, it's very flexible. There's no specific schema that you're locked in. Uh, it's, it's called a schema on ingest, which means that 
Once the data is ingested, it's automatically parsed into a JSON format that makes it very flexible for searches. And lastly, it's very quick. So uh, one of the challenges with SIMS today is that there's a lot of um, overhead when reading information and the more data you add, the slower it gets to work with the, with the, with the SIM. You can, uh, uh, you can look at, at the queries that are taking 15 minutes and 20, you can go get a coffee break and it's still looking for your data. And obviously this is not practical for SOC and definitely not for incident response. Um, just mentioning a few other scenes that are open source and out there. Uh, one coming out of uh, Alien Vault. This is OS scene. Um, it's getting a very good feedback from the field. I personally don't have much experience with it. Uh, but uh, what I like about what I hear is that it also has asset discovery and vulnerability in it. So it really can plug it into your environment and real quick find out uh, what your uh, infrastructure looks like. And then obviously this is help with finding relevant uh, threats within your, uh, within your SIM. Um, uh, I don't believe from what I hear, it is as flexible as the Kibana uh, user interface, uh, which is part of the Elastic Stack. Then one more open source that uh, is used out there coming out of Apache. Um, this is basically a combination of six open sources that having one uh, interface. Uh, what I like specifically about that is that A, it supports the Elasticsearch database. So you're not losing the flexibility and the speed um, if using Apache Metron with Elasticsearch database. And the other one is that they have a specific model for machine learning algorithms. Uh, if you are one of those, um, teams that um, are having uh, 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 approach towards uh, scientific um, studying of, uh, of your data, uh, this is something that can help. So this is how the um, Elastic Stacks looks like, just to kind of recap. Uh, we're looking at low carriers, all kinds of beats, some are for Windows, other are for Linux, for network, uh, et cetera. And then you can either send the, the data directly to Elasticsearch as a raw data, or you can send it through Logstash first for enhancement and parsing. And then eventually they're gonna end up at Elasticsearch for search and reporting. And you can access the data via Kibana uh, for visualization. Now, a lot of the themes today are starting to move into not being only uh, a log aggregator or a threat hunting solution, but also an incident response solution. So I figured I'll add also uh, some of the open source tools that related to incident response. Uh, and one which is really standing out is the Hive, uh, the Hive project. Um, again, very much uh, um, smooth integration with Elasticsearch. So all those open sources are playing nice together. And the idea behind it, like any incident response uh, um, ticketing system is to be able to collaborate within the team and create tasks and enrichment uh, using the integration that they have had both with Elasticsearch, but also with uh, MISP, uh, which I'll talk about next. So MISP, Another open solution, open source solution um, stands for malware information sharing platform, but it's much more than that. Uh, this is a literally an open source solution for threat intelligence platforms. Uh, the idea behind it is to get feeds from the community with the indicators of compromise, malicious IPs, URL, uh, hash values, and then easily uh, try to cross correlate them with those indicators coming in from your SIM. And then if there's a match, uh, obviously you want this one to, to get the priority in, in the, uh, the first uh, in the list for your security analyst to work on. And then the last um, open source tool I wanna to speak about when, when it comes to incident response is Cortex. This is actually the second half of the Hive project. 
Uh, it supports the analysis of those IOCs. This is the kind of the brain of uh, or the analysis part of what coming in from uh, the hive ticketing from one hand and what coming in from your uh, law collectors on the other hand. Uh, so uh, encourage all of you guys to look at the hive project and see if it's relevant for you. So I came up with this kind of um, final diagram that shows all or at least some of the pieces that I spoke on. Um, so if you want to build your sim totally from open source, it's definitely possible. Um, you can look at log uh, aggregators like Logstash that uh, can help you with parsing, sending them to Elasticsearch. If you're missing any of your detection tools, uh, you would be able to use them as well. In this example, Wazoo. And then eventually, this can be integrated into the Hive, um, generating tickets. Uh, and if there is any match with uh, known IOCs, uh, you can uh, immediately trigger uh, alerts to analysts. So we cannot really have a security talk with, without mentioning MITRE ATT&CK framework. Um, it's a great framework that a lot of the seams and other tools in the market are adjusting to. And um, one of the things you can do with your open seams is doing the same thing. Uh, you can use it uh, for both a red team or a blue team exercise. Um, I have here, this is actually an example of the Atomic Red, which is a uh, canary um, project that helps you test your existing environment with those techniques and tactics that are um, I mentioning within the MITRE ATT&CK framework. And then you can identify where are your gaps, right? Which, uh, which of the testings uh, passed and which have failed. But you can also use it within the sim and see within your detections, where are the detections are, where are the specific techniques, uh, whether they're more on the uh, discovery side, uh, the persistence, uh, the command and control communication, what have you. And this way you can continuously improve your security posture uh, by um, uh, adjusting your security tools to, to those red spots, places that you, you're not doing the greatest job on. Um, like I mentioned earlier, seems becoming more and more of a threat hunting tool. Uh, there are separate training out there that can help you with how to use Elasticsearch and Kibana for that purpose. Uh, but in addition to that, um, you should take into consideration tools like uh, Demaltigo, uh, Cuckoo, um, and other open source tools that can help you uh, together with the sim to figure out um, a little bit more where the, the, the threats are. Um, and other proactive tools you can use, again, from, a, uh, from the uh, Data analytics part, um, there's a great uh, tool from David Bianco, which is a great contributor to the security uh, community. Uh, it's called the Hunter. Uh, MITRE released a great tool that helps you with the process of analyzing attacks. Again, helps you with understanding which log file can help you identify which threats within the MITRE attack framework. And then I added here another link that, that has some great tools it's called Awesome Machine Learning for Cybersecurity, and that's what exactly it is. Really great uh, bunch of tools over there. And then if you want to go through uh, the situational awareness, you can work more uh, with uh, tools like uh, Rita, Yara, and the Diamond Model. Again, we're short in time now, but if you are curious or want to learn more about them, uh, feel free to reach out to them. So what I didn't cover in this call, obviously, Talking about building your own sim cannot be a half an hour talk. Uh, there's a lot of other things to consider. Uh, I'm not even getting into the architecture and the storage calculation and the bandwidth usage within the network. All of those should be taken, but I think the bottom line is that you can build your own sim with open source tools um, and there are great support coming in from the community and you can actually expand it to be not only your sim, but also your uh, detection tool uh, and your uh, threat hunting uh, attack framework. So I think I'm over with my time. 
I just want to thank you. And uh, I don't know if we have questions or not. Time for questions, but if uh, we do, I'll be happy to answer them. Yeah, so, um, hey, Nira, thank you. We really appreciate you presenting today. Um, I know there was a lot of good information about Open Source Sim. Um, so there's some questions in Slack on Track Connect. Most everybody's asking for a copy of the slides. Um, sure. So, um, you know, if you want to, yeah, if you want to PDF them and then, you know, maybe make them available to everybody, um, that would be very helpful. Um, no otherwise, we really appreciate your time today and uh, speaking at uh, B-Sides Atlanta. All right. Thank you.